So the question we're going to answer today is why dietary protein does not cause gout? Many people think that it does. They do have this consideration because purines turn into uric acid. And foods that are high in purines are organ meats, veal, turkey, venison, sardines, and fish, and red meat. Well, let's just first talk about what uric acid is. Uric acid is a byproduct of protein. And when uric acid gets too high in the blood, it can precipitate out and settle into certain joints and create all sorts of inflammation, mainly in your big toe, but it can happen in your knees, your hips, your shoulders, anywhere in the body. Then you have all this advice to cut out the meats and become a vegetarian, et cetera, et cetera. But I want to explain a couple interesting facts. Number one, over 60% of the uric acid in your body does not come from the diet. It comes from your own body. Your body makes it. It's called endogenous. So that means that only one third of the uric acid that's in your body actually comes from the actual diet. Now, when people do fasting, for example, or go on a ketogenic diet, they may have an initial spike of uric acid in the transitional stage. And that occurs because of the fact that uric acid is also a major antioxidant in your body. So apparently when your body is fasting and on a low carb diet, your body is uh, needing these antioxidants, which are made internally to clean up or heal certain things. I mean, think about it. If it's really the protein that's causing the uric acid, why would you have a spike of uric acid when you're fasting and you're not eating anything? And the next point I want to bring up is this. 90% of people with gout have a problem with eliminating uric acid, not the overproduction of uric acid. Only 10% of the people with gout produce too much uric acid. So the real problem with gout is that you're not able to eliminate the uric acid. So what does that mean? It means that the problem was within the kidney itself. So there's some type of kidney damage or some type of kidney dysfunction where you're holding onto uric acid. So the next question is what types of conditions create kidney damage? Now at the top of the list, we have diabetes. If you're a diabetic, you have a major risk of getting gout. Why is that? Because when you're diabetic, now I'm not talking about type one, I'm talking about type two, which is the majority of diabetics, you have a higher level of insulin, okay? Of course, it's not working, so you have insulin resistance. So that means you have a situation where you have the cells not absorbing insulin, so the body compensates by making more insulin. So you have all this insulin that's ineffective because you have insulin resistance. So we have high insulin, but it's not working. You have high glucose, okay, because you don't have insulin in there to regulate it, even though you have an excess of amount, but it's dysfunctional. And that's what causes the kidney destruction. There's actually four areas of your body that insulin and high sugar destroys. One is the nerves in the brain. Number two is the eye and the heart, the vessels around the heart and the heart muscle itself, and the kidney. So insulin resistance is really behind the gout. So fructose, for example, will really cause gout pretty quick. Why? Because out of all the sugars, fructose has the biggest impact on causing insulin resistance. And fructose directly can increase uric acid. So high amounts of insulin and or high amounts of glucose cause the kidney to retain uric acid. They also cause the kidney to retain fluid. So now this is making a little bit more sense. It's not the protein, it's the insulin resistance. So what can you do, all right? Number one, you have to heal insulin resistance. Now, when you start a healthy keto plan and you do intermittent fasting, you may find that your uric acid does spike only on a temporary basis. But if you continue it and you get through the adaptation process, that will go away. But you wanna do healthy keto and intermittent fasting to target this, to improve this, so you can improve this, and then eventually this right here. So as a side note, in the meantime, what you could do to temporarily reduce the gout symptoms is to alkalize the body a little bit. How? With potassium citrate, okay? You can get it in an electrolyte powder or just take potassium citrate. That will increase the pH a little bit of the urine, and that will inhibit the formation of uric acid in the joints. All right, thanks for watching. 
So if you like this video, go ahead and share it with someone that you know that could truly benefit from it.